Good evening. Good evening. Good to see each one here this evening to hear another portion of God's Word. I need everybody to concentrate really hard on leaving the world out there and letting the Holy Spirit come in here. Amen. That way we can we can get all of the blessings there is out of God's Word, okay? Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Brother Todd, would you bring us up with a word of prayer? Father God, we're glad to be back in your house tonight. Anxious to hear your word and what you got for us through the message tonight. Thank you for this, this study hour and the study that you got us on today or this right now in, the, in your word. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray for this nation, uh, the nation of Israel, Lord. We, we know you're their God. And Lord, uh, just help them as a country to do the right thing and, and before the world at this time, Lord. <coughs> Just be magnified through what you do accomplish through it, Lord. We know that your plan will come, you know, to fulfillment through that through your nation, Lord. In the end time, we know. And Lord, what a ample time to be in this study now because most of us believers really see and sense and believe that the end is near, Lord. So help us to prepare our hearts. Keep our souls right before you, Lord. And just bless this service, Lord, with your presence and your anointing. Bless Amen. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, just to punish the rowdy ones that was in choir practice today, turn to hymn number six and you better take a deep breath. What page? Six. Six.
Did you do that? <laughs> he did it. Our new friend. Our choir practice is at 4 p.m. Let's go next Sunday. Okay? Good night. Alright. Alright. Hey, y'all not supposed to be having fun in church. Come on, man. Calm down. <laughs> All right. It's not my fault you raised us that way. <laughs> we gonna slow it down a little bit. Hymn number ninety-two, and it's his fault again. Say that right. Hymn number ninety-two. Thank you. <laughs> to the end of the chapter, verse 21, please. Can I read it for you? Yes, ma'am. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed 
We go through prayer for an hour and a day and a month and a year to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen for two thousand are were two hundred thousand thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. But these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the work of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. And God, apart from the Holy Spirit, there's no way we can understand what we have just read. There's no way that we can understand most of Revelation. And even with the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can only guess sometimes at, at what it means. And so, Lord, we just pray tonight that you would guide us in this study, that you would show us, Lord, uh, through the Spirit, God, the things that you would desire us to know and to know uh, what you're trying to tell us through these things. And, and God, to also help us to be... Uh, not prepared necessarily to be here because we believe the church is going to be raptured away before this, but so that we can teach others the things that are to come. And God, so because we know everybody is going to be raptured in the church, and so people need to know and understand and at least hear uh, the Word of God. And you gave us this book as a warning. You gave us this, this book of Revelation to show us that this is where we do not want to be. We do not want to be in the midst of the opening of the seven seals. We do not want to be in the tribulation. And we certainly don't want to be here in the last three of the woes in these seven trumpets. We just don't want to be here. God, we want to be with you. And we thank you that your word teaches us that you're going to spare us from the wrath of God that is to come. And that our relationship with you is going to be the cause of that. So Lord, help us to turn to you with all of our heart. And, and, to, and to, to pray and call upon your name and make sure every day that we are ready to go when you come to get your church. God, help us, Lord. And we ask this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. <clears throat> and when we look at the, the sixth angel that sounded, the sixth trumpet that sounded, John Mason said, said that I heard a voice from the four horns of, of the golden altar, which is before God. The four horns of the golden altar that was before God is described in the Old Testament. We did it in the study of the tabernacle, talked about that, which was in uh, this, uh, this altar was in all of the temples of God, and the horns are on the edges of this altar, and it was, uh, it, it was symbolic of the power of God, the strength of God, the omnipresence of God uh, that was brought through sacrifice and offering. We know that Jesus Christ is our sacrificial lamb. He is the, the, uh, the, the last and final sacrifice. After his sacrifice, there was no more sacrifice needed. And so we find that this sound originates, uh, this voice originates uh, from, uh, from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, which signifies that this voice came with all the authority of God, of the Godhead. And so uh, uh, when, when he spoke the sixth angel, uh, the, uh, uh, he had this trumpet. And when he, he blew this trumpet, because all of these last, uh, these, these things are opened up by trumpet blowing. And, and it says that uh, when he blew this trumpet, that there were, there were four angels that were, now I want y'all to pay attention to this, that are, that are, are loosed, which have been bound in the Euphrates River. I don't know about y'all, but if you look at this real hard, mm -hmm. these things are here. Mm -hmm. These things are in the Euphrates River. 
just like those uh, creatures, the locusts that last we read, we talked about last Sunday, that were in a pit. That pit is here. We don't know exactly where it's at, but it's here. It's locked. It's going to be opened up, and these, these creatures like locusts are going to come out, and they're going to be a plague to mankind for five months. In the same token, these creatures that are these, uh, 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 matter of fact, it calls them angels. Now, let me ask you a question. Some people, you know, you can read everything at the end of the sun. There's all these different ideas, all these different opinions. How many of you think these are good angels? I didn't think so. <laughs> you know, it's not like God to take his good angels and lock them up anywhere, is he? You know, we don't, we don't want to be locked up by God anywhere. That's usually a symbol that we're too bad to be let loose. Now, let me tell you what. Y'all know how much there's evil in this world. You know how much demonism is in this world, y'all. And would you believe in that or not? I don't really care. I don't know what the powers of darkness look like. Christ cast out demons. Demons are real. And demons inhabit people. And when they do, bad things happen. And it's not always a violent thing. It's sometimes it's through all kinds of other things that take place. The Bible describes many demonic people that were possessed by demons that had different and varying uh, uh, things that were uh, visible because they were demon possessed. But these, these, uh, these angels are not good angels. These angels are bad angels. I don't know whether you know it or not, but angels have a way lot more power than men do. <laughs> Amen? And when God uses these evil angels to bring his wrath upon men of this world and women of this world, the people of this world, for the things that they have done against his will, against his word, and against his people. It's the wrath of God. you got to remember the tribulation is the wrath of God on man, not man on man. It's the wrath of God on man. And we've talked about this in the past already, how he's going to use the things at his disposal, the things of his creation, and he's not necessarily going to use men to destroy man. God has everything at his disposal. And so when he, when he uh, looses these four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates, y'all know this past year that river almost completely dried up. It didn't completely dry up because they had it dammed up in places. And had they had released the water from it, I don't think it would have completely ever dried up. But in Revelation here, we're going to see later on where the, river, the river Euphrates is going to dry up. That means even where it's dammed up is going to dry up. Amen? It's going to be such a drought that it's going to, they're going to use up all the water at their disposal. And so uh, these angels, uh, these evil angels, uh, which were bound in the Euphrates River, and the four angels were turned loose. Ooh. That's spooky. Isn't it? If y'all remember, I saw a report from the Euphrates River, and I think I shared this with y'all once uh, earlier, that, uh, that there were things that were heard they found all kinds of, uh, of temples, all kinds of caves, all kinds of things that were left by mankind that had been covered up by the Euphrates River because it had changed directions and it had actually covered up civilizations. And some of the civilization, civilizations that are modern were still there at the edge of the water where the other ones had been covered up by the water. Things change in this world. God changes things in this world. Y'all know they're still finding cities off of the banks of, of continents that have been submerged under underwater. They don't even know how long. Some of them haven't even dated yet. And so these things... Uh, there, there's a city in Turkey that they found recently that's underground, and they say it can hold 20,000 people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's still... Miles and miles. Yeah, they're still digging them up. And what you've got to realize is the earth we're walking on now, 20,000, 30,000 years ago, what they walked on way below our feet. Mm -hmm. Amen? You know, this, this thing they found in excavation, and, and they went, these uh, geologists all over the world, they got to looking at these big banks, and they go, they start in the Mississippi, uh, the, uh, the uh, Grand Canyon, and they got to looking, because they, they got it in their mind they wanted to prove there was a flood. They want to prove it. And they made an interesting discovery. 
And I don't remember the depth from the top of the ground down, but it, at a certain depth, they found something that indicated that this place had been covered by water. And they said, wow, this was probably time, the time of the great flood. And somebody said, nah, you don't believe in that stuff, do you? <laughs> so you know what they started doing? They started going to different parts of the world and making this dig at this same depth. And guess what they found? <laughs> Evidence that it was covered with water. Wow. You know, personally, they had to do that for my benefit. I believe there was a great flood, don't you? Amen. And I believe there's a wrath to come, don't you? Yes. And I just pray to God we're not here. Amen. 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 Just pray to God. All the Hainesville shell, Marcella shell, it's in shell. Yeah. It's, it's seashells. It's yeah. really seashells. Yeah. 13,000 feet below us. That's right. It's there. Yeah. And, and it's evident and it's everywhere they excavated all over the world and they didn't dig holes to find. And as a matter of fact, what they actually did, you know, they got a place in the United States of America and in other parts of the world where they have done core samples in the earth all over the place and they have these things filed. And so they, they, and they filed them by the depth of the core where the core came from. So this one geologist, he goes to the, instead of digging in these countries, he goes to the countries where they have these geological museums and these geological storage areas. And he starts taking these core samples out and breaking them open and, and tracing that date to where they found it here. And when they got to that certain depth, there it was every time. He said, now if it would have been just every once in a while, it had been coincidental, but he said, we found it everywhere we went at the same depth. That's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing, but we are people of faith. We don't need that proof. We don't need, we just need to believe the Bible. And, but you know, when a person like that does something calling themselves proving the Bible, I think, well, where's your faith? But he wants everybody to know that that flood existed. He's an educated man. He believes in it. But these four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay, I want you to listen to this, a third part of man. Now, woo! That's lots of folks. Hey, y'all remember the Great Tribulation is how long? Seven, seven years. years. It's going to happen inside this seven year span of time that that many people are going to die. Somebody asked me the question, I believe brought up the question here a while back, was well, this going to include all those that have already perished? No. I don't think so. I think that these, people, these four angels right here that are loose, that are bad, are going to be responsible for this army that we're fixing to talk about that are going to destroy one third part of all mankind. I don't know when this is going to happen. Right now there's approximately 8 billion people in the world. You do the math, what's a third of 8 billion? Amen. They're going to let be that many destroyed and somebody said, well, does it, is it the third part of men or is it the third part of everybody? The Bible is all in the masculine. Amen. So it does not necessarily mean just a third of all men. It can mean a third of all people. Amen. We men and anyway, women, we don't know it, but that's the way it put to us in men. It's always written in the masculine unless it specifically is addressing women. And, and so they, they, these demons are these four angels that are let loose. Uh, and, and I want to look at this time. It says, it says an hour, he says, which were prepared, prepared. These four angels were prepared. So that means they're heading up this, this thing that they've been waiting on all this time that God has put it in his plan that they're going to do this stuff. And, and you know what? I don't know how he works with angels, but I know how he works with people. God puts things in your mind. He puts things in your head. He puts things in your heart. He, he can turn a person into a reprobate. He can turn them into a crazy. He can do anything he wants to with people. So he's conditioned these four beings that are angels, it's called, that's in the Euphrates River, that when they get out, this is what they're going to do. This is your part. This is your part in my plan, and they have no choice but to be a part of that plan, just as God said. Amen? And so he says that's going to be for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year. Does anybody want to venture to say what that means to them? That time. Each angel has a certain amount of time. There's one for a day and one for a month and one for a year. Absolutely. I believe that's what it means. I don't believe that it's uh that it that it's talking about uh you know thirteen months, a day and an hour. 
I guess it could be, but I don't think so. Uh, but I do think it means a date and time. For example, 9 a.m. on the 15th of October in the year 2060. That's what it's referring to. We don't know that date. I just threw that out there so you don't know what I'm talking about. So there, there's not only a day, there's a month, there's a year, but there's a specific time in that day this is going to take place. You don't think God's not a God of order? He's a God of order. He's a God of preparation. And it's going to happen to the second of the time designated by Him that He knows what time that is. And it happens at the blowing of this sixth trumpet. And the, and the number of the army. And you know what? We have heard, we have read, we have seen speculation after speculation after speculation. This 200-man army. I, I know my mother. I used to get so tickled at her. She, the, her and her generation and her grandmother and all that. They had already figured out where the Antichrist is going to come from. I mean, y'all had mama and grandma like that. You know, they had, they, and you know what? Finally, she would say, well, that's what I think. Well, that's a good way to put it because that's what I have to tell y'all a lot of times. This is what I think because it's not what I know because the Bible does not give us information sometimes that we can know stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen? It just gives us the event. It don't give us geographical location. Sometimes it will give us the time frame. Sometimes it don't. But it very rarely ever gives us, especially in these, uh, these uh, times of the seven seals, where they give geographical locations. In other words, we don't know which ocean that that mountain going to fall in. We don't know the exact place that the meteors are going to fall and hit. We don't know those things, but we do know the effect it's going to have, and they're going to be so catastrophic, it's going to be a worldwide effect. Okay, are, are y'all, do y'all believe that? Yes. Okay, and so th this army that's coming in this, at this designated time are going to slay the third part of men. And John records in verse 16, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And John said, and I heard the number of them. Now, if you remember, we talked here a while back when John uh, said uh, about what he saw, that he described them as a thousand times thousand times ten thousand. You remember what I told you the highest number that the, that the Hebrew people used? One million. So and so they couldn't get past a million, so that's the way they described something they thought was more than they could count. That's the description they gave. But this time he don't say that. He says he heard them say that. Okay? And so they, he, he, he was heard this and he wrote this down so we would know today that this army is going to be 200 million. Two, that's a lot of people, isn't it? I don't know how many people live in the United States. Somewhere around 300 million. So this army is going to consist, and so because of that, people began to write books and speculate, where is this army coming from? Now, in order for us to speculate that, we've got to assume that this army is made up of men from nations. Oh, it's getting quiet now. It's getting quiet now. There's nothing here. It says that there are 200,000 uh, and, uh, and uh, how does it put it? The horsemen. He mentions the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. So it does say horsemen. Okay? Does it mean men on horses? No. I don't know where it does or not. I'm just throwing this out here. Because it is very possible that this is not an army from a nation. Do you think those insects <laughs> that showed up in the last trumpet or something we got now? I'm just throwing it out there. Well, you know all the stuff that I'm teaching right now is theory and what I believe and what could be. And, and so what could be could be whatever you wanted to, to make it. But there is a truth in all this. Regardless of where we understand this, whether it's actual men or actual demonic army. Now, there's only two continents or two nations in this world that's capable of conjuring up an army that big. Does anybody know what two na uh, nations they are? China and one more, which is... India. And we said here a while back, because I looked up statistics, India has surpassed China 
on population. They are the largest population in the world. China being second, or real close. That's or, today. Pardon? That's today. Though. That's today. Yeah, that's real close. The China, the, uh, India, and so so it. There is two nations that could actually do that. Well, before there was two nations that could, China was the only one. And so guess what everybody said? Wrote books on it. It's going to be the Chinese government. Amen. And, we're not, and we can see it in here because we're going to see the colors that they use, which are colors that China flies and represents. We're going to see some colors here in a minute. But it just still does not necessarily mean that. So there are, there are 200 million and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and the horses, not the men, are the ones who delivered the blows. Y'all see that? Look at what it says. And, 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 and so I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And, and so he describes what they look like. They, they, they had breastplates on that looked like fire. That means they were... What does that mean to you? <clears throat> means they were yellow, red, they looked like a flame, or when sunlight or light hit them, they reflected. Now, which is it? We don't know. But we know this is what the breastplate that these people had on that were blessed breastplates of fire. So it gives a description of what they have on and of Jasoneth. And Jasoneth, now listen to this, Jasoneth is a stone that was in the garment of the high priest of the Old Testament in Israel, okay? And Jason was one of the 12 stones that he had, and it was a, a red, sometimes red or orange stone was the color of that thing. So this thing, they have breastplates of fire and of Jason. Uh, John knew full well what that color was and what it looked like, and brimstone. Now brimstone represents fire. We, talk, we hear about a uh, hell, uh, the, uh, the place of fire and brimstone. We, we hear about that. Well, brimstone is sulfur. Okay? In our definition today, that is what brimstone is. It's sulfur. It's a place, it's sulfur is a, it's the, it's what you see. It's a yellow powder. We all, how many of y'all ever put sulfur out in the yard and try to take care of ticks? Yeah. Okay? We got medication derived from it. If you go see a volcano, you're going to see one of the craters and it's going to be lined on the inside with sulfur because it came out of the fire and the eruption of the, of the volcano. So that's what brimstone reflects, is the sulfur. How many of you ever heard of incendiary bombs? How many of you ever heard of phosphorus bombs? Okay, now you, if you've been keeping up with the Israeli war, Israel got accused of using phosphorus bombs. Phosphorus bombs are used to, uh, to hit an area. It's extremely hot. It sets off immense smoke. And they're supposedly, in wartime, only supposed to use those things to mark a, a place that they won't hit, or they mark a place that they want to avoid. And they see the smoke rising up from the incendiary bomb or the, or the phosphorus bomb. But the thing about it is it emits a chemical when it explodes and if it touches a human being it starts burning and it don't stop okay how many of you ever went to vietnam raise your hand how many of you know what napalm is mm -hmm. you saw it didn't you napalm is another thing it was a gel of gasoline it could be gasoline diesel it could be kerosene that they turned into a gel and when they put it into an explosion it erupted y'all saw it it would level jungles Amen, that's why they used it. It would burn, and once it stuck to something, once it hit something, it stayed on it till it burned it up. That's what napalm does. So we're, we're, we're looking at things like that when we're talking about what's going to be going on at this time, and they, they describe these men that have plates of fire and of Jason and of brimstone. And then it starts talking about their, the horses, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lion. Now let me ask you a question. Now, I know you can put a helmet on a horse if you want to. But if I was fixing to go into war with a horse, I might want little blinders on him, but I wouldn't want a helmet on him, would you? Would you? These horses right here are not normal horses. And when we see the description of these things, I don't believe the men sitting on them are normal, and I don't believe the horses they're sitting on are normal. 
Amen. I don't believe that. And you may do it, and and that's, that's up to you if you want to believe that or not. But the heads were horses, uh, the horses were as heads of lions. And look at this. Out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Those very things that I just told you about that men now are capable of issuing in weaponry. Now, I'm not saying that men are going to use the weaponry here. I'm saying these demons are. Or these, these uh, four angels are going to cause this to happen. I don't know what army they're going to use. I would, in my mind, I think it's a demonic army like we've never seen before. I think the horses that they're on are demonic animals that like we've never seen before. And I believe their heads are going to be like lions. I believe their teeth are going to be like lions. And I believe that they're going to emit smoke, fire, and brimstone from their mouths and from their nostrils. And I don't believe it's going to be cold weather and you just see steam. I think this is a horrific story. This is something that's not that you would not want to see. Amen? And so the, so when it, when it talks about these things, and their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Now listen to this uh, in verse 18. And these three, fire, smoke, and brimstone, uh, uh, but by, the, by these three, fire, smoke, and brimstone, the, uh, the third part of men, were killed. So the thing that the Bible says emits from the horses kill the animals. Now a lot of people say we look at modern warfare and they're seeing something, a plane coming in. They're not, they, John knows a horse when he sees it. He knows a man riding a horse when he sees it. <clears throat> we're the ones that don't know that much about it. He did. Amen. And so when he described it, he didn't describe them flying in the air. Did he? He didn't describe them shooting missiles with napalm and phosphorus bombs. He didn't describe that. He said that what emitted from the horse's mouth, the power was in the mouth and in their tails, for their tails were likened to serpents. Now see that? Now how many of y'all ever had a horse look like this? How many of you ever seen a horse look like this? How many of you would ever buy a horse that looked like this? How many of you would ever ride a horse that looked like this? <clears throat> That's what I thought. I think that it makes you visualize a dragon. It, it's almost like visualizing a dragon, but these people are on riding on these things, and he calls them a horse. Amen. He calls them a horse. Is what he calls them. He didn't say they look like a horse. <laughs> huh? He didn't say. They he didn't say they look like one. He called them a horse. Yeah. Okay. Because in the past he said things that looked like certain things, but this time he don't say that. He says horsemen, mm -hmm. and he described the, the men on the horses, or what he describes as men on horses, and then he describes the horses, okay? And so by these three uh, was the third part of men killed by fire and smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Now he's talking about the horses' mouths, okay? Any comments on this so far? Because I know I'm moving fast. Just one, just figure it this way. The river dries up, Euphrates, the armies of the east come across it. So that's east of the Euphrates on over the coastline of China. Well, we know the south region, southeastern Asia, is tropical, along the shoreline. Above that is mountainous. And above that is cold. And that region, do you think there's 200 million horses in that region alive? No. Have you ever seen a show in Valley of horses around the jungle area? No. Mm -hmm. In the Himalayan mountains? No. Mm -hmm. These ain't regular. They, that, that's proof enough there's something else. Yeah, it's something else. You know? it, it's something else that appears when God says it's time to show up, and they do. And, and here's another thing. If you think that it is mankind producing this army, in, a, it, in other words, if you think this army is an army of Chinese, even though the colors are similar with the yellows and all that stuff like that and the reds, and they're, they're, you remember the symbol of the uh, communist China is the sun on, on their flag. You can, you can picture that here, but I, I don't think God is showing us that. I think he's showing us a supernatural, demonic army sitting on demonic animals. I think that that's what is unleashed at this time. And here's the reason I believe that. 
If you believe all of the other seals that's been opened, okay, and you and and we have gone over what is going to happen to each and each time, what's going to happen to people. There's going to be already mass casualties. There's going to be people that tormented. Is China going to be void from that? Is India going to be void from that? Are they not going to suffer? If they are, then this is not a worldwide tribulation. It's not the wrath of God poured out on the world. So you've got to assume that somebody going through all of these things, all of these seals, has got sense enough to, to, to equip and a stock an army of 200 million men and move them to the Euphrates River to cross it. That's what you've got to believe. Amen? Probably going to be destroying along the way. <laughs> along the way there. Absolutely. And, and you know, so what we're seeing is the destruction and the annihilation and the wrath of God on mankind. Mm -hmm. oh, man. And that don't mean He's going to use mankind to do it. He's going to use supernatural stuff that they ain't never seen. There's no defense for it. There's no way to get away from it. You can't hide from God. You can't go anywhere. David said, if I go to the bottom of the ocean, you're there. If I go to the top of the mountain, you're there. If I get put in the grave, you're there. Amen. You can't hide from God, and there's going to be no defense against this army mm -hmm. that shows up. So if you believe that it's men on horses, then you got to believe that they, they have the, the ability to amass an army of this size, equip an army of this size, stock an army of this size, move an army of this size, while all of this other catastrophic stuff is going on in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember when we talked about the super volcano at Yellowstone Park? And I looked at, y'all probably didn't go look at the videos of it, I looked at a statistic that showed uh, if the wind was blowing the way it normally blows from from uh, that coast to this coast, because like that Pacific wind is very strong. Uh, Brother Barry, y'all lived in California at one time. Y'all remember? Y'all been on that, that coast, and, and uh, where they got the warning signs when you're driving down. I think it's Interstate Five, and they got wind warning signs. Man, this Arkansas man. His tech country takes his wife and our crazy son went on vacation there one time and we were driving down this interstate and the boy was all pretty and we were seeing all these orchards and all this stuff and, and, all, and all of a sudden we seen a sign and it said and it showed a truck turning over and it talked about this wind was coming from <laughs> Let me tell you what. When we hit that wind, you don't go <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. For a person like me, and my son was driving the car, and I got it to get up beside this 18-wheeler because it kind of kept it off of us, and then I got thinking about that sign I saw, so when that 18-wheeler called, I said, speed up. <laughs> There's the exit, get on. There's a little old bitty community right there that had a hotel. And we pulled off of that road, and I ain't lying. Even driving into that wind, it felt like that car was fixing to get airborne. When we got out, <laughs> I opened the door, I was on the passenger side, and he parked me, and I was on the uh, east side of the building, but I was opening the door to the west side. Mm -hmm. When I opened that door, that wind like took that door off of that car. Mm -hmm. it, when Anita and John got out, and we was headed to the, the, the door of the hotel, it blew us there. And then you had to open this door. And I see now why they didn't let them open to the inside. The wind would have come right on in. And we got that door open finally. Went in and I, it, you get killed if you ain't out of the way when that door slams. Mm. Now, I don't know if I'm exaggerating a little bit. That was a hard wind. Now, so the wind, so if Yellowstone erupts and that kind of wind's going on, it's going to go ahead and annihilate that coast. It's going to take out about two-thirds of the United States of America. Now, let me ask you a question. Would we amass an army during that time? Well, if you believe this army is men, that's what you got to believe. That this stuff ain't happening in China. This stuff ain't happening in, uh, in India. This stuff ain't happening anywhere because they're able to amass this many people. So I don't believe it. That's why I don't believe. You believe what you want to. But that's why I don't believe that it is an army of normal men. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Anybody want to comment on it? The only way I can see them doing it is through the United States.
United Nations. You'd have to be a United, you know, all nations. Well, you'd have to assume the United Nations is not going through the hell that's already happened too. That's the deal. Is what's that already, is the deal. Already took place. That is the deal. Yeah. I mean, the su food supply succumbed. The, the, the oxygen level is depleted. I mean, the sun is not shining but a third part of the day. The moon, you're not seeing but a third part of the stars in the skies at night because there's this massive cover over from all of the stuff that's happened when the meteor falls, when the volcano <coughs> erupts, all of this stuff that happens. People living in caves. And yeah, things. people hiding in the rocks oh. trying to get away. And, and, and this happens right after those crazy bugs come out that, that's got heads like lions and, and crowns on their head and, and hair like women and, and, and they got teeth like lions and they bite and they got tails like a scorpion and they light on people and bite them. They can't kill them, but they can torment the fire out of them. I had a pretty good week since we were in last week, but these, these people didn't have that break. Yeah. yeah, they didn't have a break. No, this this happens. And so at the end of the five months of the of the locust, boom, this other trumpet sound, and these four angels are let loose. And this is the result. This is what takes place to destroy a third part of men, of men. For their powers in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were likened to serpents and had and had heads and with them, they do hurt. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you ever saw a horse with a tail that had another head on it? Well, I really think that, you know, whenever they say horses, I think they're just putting that as a description because it's something that's rode. Okay, and something he's familiar with, something that looked like to him. But he didn't say like that. He said they were, <laughs> they were horses. Well, he says over here the shape of the locust was like horses. Oh, that, you're talking about the locusts. Yeah, they were shaped like the locusts. They weren't near as big as a horse they were. But I think it's just kind of give, to kind of give you an idea that they're riding these things. Yeah, they, they are riding these things, and he calls them horses, and, and they are very destructive. The animals actually do. Now, we talked about war horses, I think, a little bit last week, and how uh, in, those, in the days when, when people used horses to ride against other armies, those horses did as much damage to people as the people sitting on them did. And if you'll remember, if you ever watched any of them old movies, they always made those sharpened stakes and they put them in the ground to raise up so when the horses got to them, they tried to kill the horses because the horses were that dangerous to them. Okay? And so these animals right here are not going to be affected that way. Men are not going to have time to prepare that way. They're going to be too busy trying to eat trying to have water, trying to live. They're going to be too busy because the wrath of God is poured out upon this country and their mind is not going to be on war. It's going to be on getting something to eat and something to drink. They're going to be in survival mode. That full. Be... No. Full. I don't care where you're in China, India, United States, if we even exist, where you're at, that's the mode we're going to be in. And it's going to be every man for himself and let's Get it, get what we can, and and survive. Amen. We saw in one of those uh, uh, those seals that was open when it was all said and done. Men ran into the mountain and asked to beg God to let the mountains fall on them and die. They refused to repent. Where well, you remember that? Mm -hmm. They were running for their lives. They were running scared. They weren't interested in starting any war with anybody. And I believe that's the way it's going to be in these seven years of tribulation. That the furthest thing from men's mind, and, and the this wrath is not God orchestrating men against men. This is God's wrath personally against men, against wickedness, against evil, against Satan, and He uses the evil that's already came from His kingdom to accomplish it. He's in. Listen to me. Don't you ever think God is not in control of Satan himself? Absolutely. Don't ever believe that. Don't you ever. You know what? When Jesus Christ walked on the got out of that boat and stepped up on the shore of Gadara, you remember what that man did that had a legion of demons in him? He came running to Jesus. Now let me ask you a question. Was it the man or was it the demons that ran to Jesus? The demons were in control of the man. They had been in control of the man. 
He had supernatural strength. They could put shackles on him in chain, and he would break those things. He was so tormented. He was tormented. But when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stepped out on that bank, that thing came running to him, and when it got to him, it didn't scream, it didn't cuss, it didn't slap at him, it bowed down to him. Amen. And when he spoke to that man, he wasn't speaking to that man. He knew he wasn't speaking to that man. He knew that man had no control of himself, but he knew who did have control of him. And he asked him, who are you? Like he didn't already know. Remember, the man didn't speak to him. The demons did. The demons were bowed before him. Don't you ever think God has not got control over them? Well, why don't he just stop them? Because that's not his plan. That's not his way. Amen. If God stepped, stopped everything that tormented us, <laughs> boy, we'd have, a, we'd have a good old time. You know what we'd do? We'd forget God. Amen. 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 We would forget God. When everything goes really good and smooth in your life is when you're most likely to forget to praise God, forget to honor God, forget to call Him. But you let things go wrong when no man can help you out and you get on your knees and beg God, won't you? Amen. And so God has control. He has control. So that's the reason He don't just do away with everything that bugs us. Amen. Because in our weakness, He is made strong. In our infirmities, He is made great. In our need for Him, we call to Him. He likes that Amen. for us to call to Him. And you know what? In our need, if we'll call to Him and He hears us, yeah. He'll help us. Yeah. That is the way God operates. And we try to make God operate on our way. Mm -hmm. uh, according to our plan. According to what we want Him to do. God will never operate that way, never has, and never will. So right now there's evil, yet at the same time there's salvation. There's the Holy Spirit. There's an evil spirit of darkness. There's demonic forces. There's angelic forces. But there's Jesus. Hallelujah. He's right in the middle. Hallelujah. And He's available to me and you to help us withstand or not even face this. Amen. Amen. What a God. He's got a plan. You know, the Old Testament said, I got a plan for you. Amen. I got a plan for you. Remember Jeremiah 29 11, what he said? Amen. <laughs> anybody can know anybody? Anybody? I know the plans I have for you. Pardon? I know the plans I have for you. Yeah. He's he got this plan for us. It's all good, right? Mm -hmm. what, what did Jesus Christ say? He said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. He got a plan for us too. You know what his plan is? He said, I got a way to prepare a place for you. And when I get there and prepare a place for you, I will not leave you. I will come and take you to where I am. Now that's Gary Terry's uh, interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. But that's what he says. That's his plan for us. You believe that? Mm -hmm. I do. I believe that with all of my heart. Or I wouldn't be up here talking to you today. I wouldn't have been up here preaching to you. If I didn't believe that, I'd be out there living like the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that. I believe he's got a plan. And I believe he's made a way for us to be in that plan. Amen. We did see that great light that we talked about this morning. We turned to that great light. If you're saved here today, you saw that light. And you came to that light. And that light now... In, is inside of you. That's the God, Jesus' plan for us. And He's going to come back for us because He's got a place and a plan. He's got a plan and a place for us right now. And I hope and pray that you're ready for that. Okay, so He said, verse 19, For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were likened to serpents. I don't read that. And verse 20, And the rest of the men, oh, I, I did forget to, we, we, I asked you the question, these tails have heads on them, like I said. Mm -hmm. and, and they're probably looking like snakes because he said like unto serpents, but not exactly <coughs> serpents. And had heads with them, uh, they do hurt. Okay? And so, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands. 
and they, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, neither can see, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. So what has got him so angry at these people? Although Christ has come, although the church has come, <coughs> although there's so many martyrs that John has already seen that were killed in the Great Tribulation, he's already seen them, these people still worship idols. Amen. Now, that seems foreign to us, but maybe it's not. You know, a lot of times, you know, the definition of an idol is anything we place ahead of God. Did y'all hear me? Amen. If you worship it more than you do God, something wrong with you. And you, we've all heard the stories. You can use your own imagination. I'm not going to elaborate and get into all that and get sidetracked. But it said, so these people that were not killed, although they saw this army, they saw the insects. They have seen these things. And yet, they still will not repent. And you know what? If we go out to visit and we want to try to help somebody find Christ, if we have one to insult us, we'll quit for a, forever because we got insulted. We're, we're so afraid of that. And yet, we know that this is something these people right here have not been touched by God and refused to repent before God. Is salvation still available to these people right now? If it was not, he would not have said that, would he? If it was not repentance, why would he even mention repentance? God was still wanting them people to repent. Amen. He was still wanting them people to repent. And, but they, uh, the, uh, he wanted, he said, yet repent not of, their, of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. So we get a picture here of what the men of the world that's left here, what they're up to, what they're doing. Now, I want you to understand something. We know what murder is. What is sorcerers? Drug dealers. Pardon? Drug dealers. Okay, sorceries, sorceries and magic in the scripture is not just like a magician does. Okay, sorcery and magic in the scripture is not just a magician fooling your eyes. Sorcery and magic, like in the time of Egypt, those magicians that he brought forth were actually doing the things that he said they said they were doing. Amen. Think about it. Uh, and also, the imaginations and the sorceries that the Bible talks about is caused usually by drugs. So we're talking about people who were murderers and nor the sorcerers. They were drug addicts. They were all these things. They were still steeped on drugs and nor they, and they were still steeped in fornication and they were still thieves. This is what kind of people was here that he was dealing with. And yet he made a remark that they still wouldn't repent even after seeing what they just saw. Mm -hmm. Amen. Think about that. Now I want y'all to think about our world today. Do we have murders? Mm -hmm. I showed Anita something that I looked at today mm -hmm. uh, that uh, showed the uh, top 10 cities per capita. Okay, per capita. Not the cities that had the most crime, but the cities that had most crime per population. Did you know there was three cities in the state of Louisiana? One of them within 50 miles of us. There was three cities in the top 10 of crime cities per capita. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were like six, seven, and eight. And they were New Orleans. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Shreveport. <coughs> and I saw that and I thought, oh my goodness. 
That's why every time you turn the news broadcast on to watch local news, they talk about somebody getting killed down there. Yeah. Amen. It's starting to be this way in Texas County. Yeah. Now listen to me. This, this is the type of thing that we already see happening in our nation. How we already see the sorcery. If you want to think they're drugs, you think about the fentanyl. Have you heard the statistic on how many people in one year has died from fentanyl that's an illegal drug coming across that border every day? 100,000 Americans in a year. All you got to do is stick your tongue to it and it will kill you dead. They're so wicked. It's so horrific. And they're trying to get children strung out on drugs that they lace candy with it and hand candy to children. Mm -hmm. And it kills as many of them as survive it. We are in an age where we better open our eyes. We better know that this stuff is coming. Amen. And we need to do whatever it takes not to be a part of this and to make sure our children are protected from this stuff. And there's only one protection from it. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the way, the only way. The only protection we have is Him. He can build a hedge about you. He can build a hedge about your family. He can build a wall around you. And now there's another thing that we have at our disposal. We have Jesus Christ first and foremost, and then we have the power of prayer where we can pray for one another, and we can call on the name of the Lord for one another, and God hears and answers. And we've already seen in Revelation where the Bible says that the prayers of the saints are with Him in glory, and He's going to pour them out in His wrath. Amen. We better believe we have something we can do and it ain't called the voting booth. Right. It's called calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. That's what we can do. Yes. And we can call on the name of the Lord with all of our heart. Live with all of our heart. And we can live. Like we talked about this morning. We can live and be an example to everyone around us so they'll know what it's supposed to look like. Amen. Any comments? This point population is diminishing with all the murders and the demons scourging around so it's, population is decreasing yeah we're just there I do have one question for the okay when so if the person you know given the, the people who are left here having a chance to get saved that's if they don't get killed by plague. That they haven't repented before that happens. That's just like in today. If a person dies and they've never been saved, that's the end of it. Probably. Right. I mean, it's the same. That don't change even then. And so God still desires repentance because he's not willing that anybody should die that way. He wants all of us to come to repentance. And I think that's why... Even in Revelation, they keep saying over and over, even as it progresses, and they would not repent. That's what he was wanting them to do. But there's just so much death crammed into that seven years. You have even less of a chance to repent. Right, right. You can peacefully do it now. Yeah. But less. Yeah. The plague of the corona. Yeah. I mean, it, it's terrible. Yeah, we think about the coronavirus, man. We ain't seen that. Mm -hmm. Because these plagues, the plagues are not just... Lack of rain, earthquakes, plague can be disease also. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing we're looking at. We just stand here. Please bow your head and close your eyes. Y'all, it's going to get bad. Can we look around the world today and think, it can't get any worse. Oh, yes, it can and it will. It's going to. So all we can do is make sure our relationship with our Lord personally is what it needs to be, where it needs to be. And we need to be full of His Spirit. We need to be people who share. We need to be people who are ambassadors for Christ. We ought to be people that live a lifestyle of holiness and gratitude for our Lord that people can see. So these altars are open tonight if you need to pray.
You know what? Sometimes they're just things a lot more important. Amen. Way, way more important in my mind. And Melissa, come here, please. Let me, let me move all this stuff out of the way. Melissa has uh, not told any of y'all. She's only shared a couple of things with, with me. And she has been to the doctor and they found some issues. And it's uh, your... I have thickening of the bladder wall and I have a mass in my bladder. She has a mass in her bladder that they're worried about. Mm -hmm. And they haven't done any biopsies or anything like that yet. Uh, they're going to have to. And, uh, you know, her worry is she's got two children that the Lord has given her. Mm -hmm. Her goal mm -hmm. is to lead them to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And she wants us to pray for her tonight. She don't know exactly what the will of God is, but we know what prayer can do. Amen. So if we can gather around her, we're fixing to anoint her head with oil, we're going to pray for her. And we're going to pray that uh, God would heal her, that when they get in here and start testing this mass, that it comes to nothing. Amen. We're going to believe God for that. We're going to trust God for that. But even if it does, we know he's still in control of everything. And there's a way. There's always a way because Christ is a way and he is that way. And so we need to pray for her as a church, as a body as, of believers. We need to continue to lift her up into prayer because not only is, is, is she dependent on the Lord, but she wants those children to learn how great he is and see him work powerfully in her life. We need to pray for her, her family. Her family is... Uh, is, is going through a lot. Not just her, but her, a lot of her family going through a lot right now. So we're going to pray for that family. We're going to pray for her specifically. And we want to continue to lift this family up in prayer. Yes. And we need to continue to encourage those two little brats back there. <laughs> I'm telling you, you didn't even see what I had to do with them this morning. <laughs> Listen to me. I can put up with anything they can dish out because Christ wants to save those kids. Amen. <laughs> We need to be patient. We need to be kind. 
We need to be thoughtful and realize they just don't know how to act yet. But with God's grace and God's help, they're going to know Jesus. So let's pray that way. Let's pray that prayer. And let's lift that up before the throne of grace tonight. Listen, my dear sister, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up. We pray, God, for your body. We pray, God, that, he, that you would take away the worry from her, the anxiousness from her by not knowing what's going on in her life. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, they found a mass. I pray, God, they hadn't done anything else to it but look at it. I pray, God, that you would place your healing hand upon her, God. I pray as a great physician, Lord, that you would just reach down and heal her body. That you would take this mass and turn it into nothing. Right, Lord. That you would take it up and throw it back at Satan. God, we pray, Lord, that you would heal this woman. We pray, God, that you would bless her life. God, she's not through working yet. She's got children now. We lift up her family to you. We lift up her husband to you. We lift up those children to you. And we pray, God, for her family. We pray, God, for those that Satan has just has just, just beaten their doors down. But we know. We know someone greater than Satan. We know someone. We know someone that has won the victory. Yes, Lord. We know someone that has victorious over death and hell. We know someone who has the keys to every kingdom. He has the keys of heaven. He has the keys of hell. He has the keys of the grave. He has every key. And he's in control of it all. So God, we, we pray to that king tonight. We pray to that holy God tonight. We pray to the one who became sin for us. We pray for the one who to the one who shed his blood for us. We pray to the one who has redeemed us and filled us with his spirit. And we pray, God, that even now, you would fill her till she overflows with the Holy Spirit. And well, you do it, Lord, that you cleanse her body of any disease that's there. And God, we, we pray, Lord, that you would build your heads about her, about her family, about her home, and her whole family her daddy, her sisters, her relatives that are under fire from Satan. We pray, God, that you would encompass them all, that you would build that holy protective hedge around them, oh God, and you would bind Satan yes, from Lord their Jesus. midst, that you would take away his power from their hearts and their minds and their lives. We lift them up to you, God, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we pray believing and having faith and knowing God. Without a doubt, you can do these things. So God, may your will be done in it all. And we're going to be quick to give you all praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, I wanted to, but I said, no, it's Yeah. I didn't do it. She did. I'm going to send you